and each one of these rectors are hired and, and they're asked when um, they're entering into this interview process, are you comfortable serving as a pastor for your particular hall? Um, and so what it immediately allows for is a disposition of um, evangelization and engagement at the hall level. Now, how does that help me? Um, all of a sudden, in addition to my staff, which is robust, I then have the partnership with 30 uh, rectors, some of which are priests, some of which are laymen and women, but all of which are engaged in this wider mission. And so we are constantly trying to engage and invite students from across the spectrum. Um, that includes the very engaged folks, the people who are likely going to come into campus ministry if I barred and locked the doors, um, to also beginning to say, um, you know, how is it that we can reach out to the, the average Joe or average Jane on this um, and invite them in? But I, I really do believe that it's kind of two parts. It's uh, principles of subsidiarity, uh, being mindful of where people live communally, but then also uh, responding to where uh, we believe needs are from a uh, university-wide spectrum. So that might be in the form of retreats, it might be in the form of pilgrimages, it might be in the form of, um, you know, some kind of keynote speakers that we're able to bring into campus and engage students in a myriad of different ways. But at the end of the day, to summarize all that I've just said, it comes down to relationships. And I think what Notre Dame is built to do um, is to be in relationship with a variety of different students. And in doing so, um, serves as kind of a, a vehicle for engagement. Sounds like you take a big institution and you try to make it small through the dorms and then through those relationships. That That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Okay. And I'm, I'm sure some people are going to be listening and they're saying, well, gee, it's Notre Dame. You can do everything at Notre Dame, uh -huh. right? And yet I'm sure there are some unique challenges and struggles that you guys have. Yeah. I, I mean, I think what where our uh, struggles ultimately are uh, lot, fall on the line of being at an elite top 20 university. And so we have students on our campus and, and we're by no means unique in this, but we have students who in many ways have been bred to believe that they are the best uh, at what they do. Um, and not only that, have gotten pretty good at controlling their external environment. Um, so what happens? They get here and now there's 8,000 of the same type of kid um, in a university that in addition to the, the, the mission of uh, kind of cultivating one's faith, there's also a great desire to engage them in their own um, to engage them in their own academics. And so what ultimately happens where we find our students kind of challenged with their faith is they feel that it's something that they can sometimes attend to at a later point, whereas the academic narrative feels a bit more demanding uh, for them to attend to right now. Um, and so what does that mean? What does that look like? We end up finding students being pretty overly committed to what it is that they uh, feel the need to be able to do. Um, and sometimes faith gets a little bit of a short shrift there. Um, and so how, how and, and, and when we can make compelling invitations to re-engage them is one of our bigger challenges. Um, but also all the myriad of, of struggles that come along with a student having that busy of a schedule and, and placing that many expectations on their shoulders, high levels of anxiety, depression, um, uh, even despair sometimes about what their future may hold. Um, and being able to attend to that in, in a way that, um, that is both impactful and gives them voice to the, the faith that they have within their own hearts. Yeah, it's also an opportunity, right? I mean, to just to speak faith and, faith and hope into you got it. there is a huge opportunity. Um, last question, Father Pete. How do you measure a student's growth in their relationship with Christ, uh, whether that's formally, informally, how do you know and how does your team sort of attend to right. the deepening of faith relationship in Christ? All right, you know, we, we've benefited immensely in, in some respects from the good work of Sherry Waddell and forming intentional disciples. We have, um, especially in our sacramental prep and RCIA, um, have been engaged in threshold conversations where we're largely gauging where our students are at and, and being able to assess where they're at in that moment, but also have a greater desire to, to bring them along in the journey. Similarly, we are actively working uh, in our retreats area uh, to begin to create retreat programming um, that, that recognizes the, the actual development um, of, of students in terms of their own cognitive development, but also just who they are as people throughout the course of four years. And so um, thinking about um, 
not only having retreats around identity, which is typically where we find our students out of the gate, who am I? Um, who am I in response to this faith? But also seeing about can we move them along a spectrum that ultimately leads them to mission and engagement? Um, and to do that, it requires a different set of questions and a different set of themes. And so we're constantly trying to map this um, and I think in all honesty, though, this is an area that we are continually improving. You know, I, we live in a world of data, um, but sometimes the critique of that world is, is that data, data everywhere, but no one knows exactly how to use it. And so we are continuing to evolve in that process. But it, it comes down in many respects to recognizing the, the, the overall formative development that occurs with our students, one, uh, and the need for us to be attentive to it. And second of all, with respect to um, good, great work that's been done out in the field, especially with the likes of someone like Sherry Waddell, um, to tap into those resources. Mm -hmm. Well, and shameless plug, but Sherry's going to be one of the keynote speakers at the CCMA convention in 2018. So great. just couldn't resist that. <laughs> well, Father Pete, we really appreciate uh, you taking a few minutes to be on the show today. And how can people find out more about you and the ministry of, of campus ministry at Notre Dame? You know, I think there's a couple of great ways we have. Uh, we have a blog that's written largely by our students called Examine. You can likely find that at examine.nd.edu. And then, of course, at our campus ministry website. We, um, we have, a, a, you know, at all of our types of programming. If you really want to get interested in it, uh, we have a newsletter that fires out uh, every Tuesday throughout the course of the academic year. And so those are some great ways. So campusministry.nd.edu would also be a great spot. Uh, for folks to um, learn a little bit more about the work that we're doing here. Cool. Thanks a lot for being our guest. Hey, it's been an honor. Thanks so much for having me.